It's time for the transfer tips ahead of game week 16. So let's see who we should buy, hold and sell. And at the beginning of this video, as you can see on screen, we're going to be comparing Bernardo Silva and Jarrah Bowen to see who we should bring in first and if we should actually bring them in at all. So let's get straight into the video. Statistically, they're quite similar, although you have to say Bowen overall is a little bit superior. So you look at shot volume, shots in the box and overall shots. And even on target, Bowen leads in all of those metrics. In terms of actual goal contributions, Bowen also leads. But you also have to bear in mind that it is more difficult to score goals. And at the same time, you get more points for scoring, especially as a midfielder. So Bernardo Silva is actually better in terms of FPL points. That is reflected. He's the second highest scoring midfielder in the game. But Bowen is still a really good asset. And you also have to factor in the price difference. There's almost a million difference in price. Both of them just keep on going up, especially Bernardo Silva. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. In terms of XG, Bowen also leads in that but he has been underperforming in terms of the actual goal scored with only three. On the other hand, with Bernardo Silva, he's been vastly overperforming them. Is that sustainable? The stats would tell you it really isn't, especially with the shot volume compared to Bowen, who probably has more up his sleeve over the Christmas period and those fixtures. But Bernardo Silva also has some fantastic games. And if you look at the next three fixtures in particular, Bernardo Silva has way better games where I can see City scoring more goals than West Ham and also Bernardo Silva probably outperforming Jared Bowen. In terms of big chances, very similar here. Seven for Bernardo and eight for Bowen. So both of them looking really good in this regard. And in terms of big chances created and key passes, Bernardo Silva is slightly superior and that would explain slightly why his XA, his expected assists, is it's notably higher anyway than Jared Bowen. Who would I go for? I like both of them a lot. I would try to get both of them in into your team. But who would I go for first? That's a different question. I would probably go for Bernardo Silva first, especially if you already have Mikel Antonio to kind of balance out the teams and have cover for City and West Ham attack. But ultimately, what I'm doing myself as I've brought Bernardo Silva in this week, but in the coming weeks, I'm looking to bring in Jared Bowen as well. So it's not a case of who you should get overall. It's about who you should get first. And I will probably go for Bernardo Silva first. There's also his red hot form, which is absolutely sensational. And I think he can keep it up, but just maybe not to the same degree, especially when it comes to goal scoring. I think he deserves more assists. He's going to get more assists in the next few games as well. The only problem is how will KDB coming back affect Bernardo Silva? But right now, Bernardo Silva is completely completely nailed playing 90 minutes every single game and he's vital to everything City do. Both of them great options, Bowen significantly cheaper and has better stats but I would prioritise the Bernardo Silva transfer first before getting Bowen in later. And now we're looking at the buy section so we're going to be highlighting three players for buying, holding and selling each and the first buy is Cristiano Ronaldo. I talked about this in my best wildcard team video. He is not essential, you don't have to get him and Mohamed Salah is one of the main reasons why because you don't have to captain Cristiano Ronaldo with Salah being such a good asset this season but it is a bit of a tricky one he is over 12 million and if you're not really going to captain him then why get him but I think those fixtures are just absolutely sensational over the next two or three months and his stats are very good his xg is 6.55 even his xa is relatively decent with a few big chances created and nine key passes he's had 10 big chances himself i remember one against watford he didn't even take that and i think he actually has more goals up his sleeve to be fair 43 shots he always takes a lot of shots throughout his whole career and 36 shots in the box he's one of the best goal scorers of all time six goals and two assists in 12 games is fairly decent but at around 12 million is he worth it up until this point he hasn't been but with those fixtures with Ralph Ranić coming into the mix I think Ronaldo will justify his price tag but you don't have to get him and you can do so much with your budget if you don't go for Cristiano Ronaldo so there are pros and cons to this transfer but you look at the other premium strikers there is Romelu Lukaku to consider Harry Kane though is an awful form the fixtures will turn for Spurs soon and they also have been hit with COVID-19 with 13 players and staff being affected. Eight players and five staff. So I wouldn't look there. Jimmy Vardy has some poor fixtures coming up and also in game week 17, that game against Spurs could be called off. So really, we're just looking at Cristiano Ronaldo. If you need a premium striker, just go for Mr. C. We're looking at another Portuguese player at Manchester United and it's not Bruno Fernandes but what I would say there is that you could actually cover Manchester United attack with Bruno Fernandes instead of Cristiano Ronaldo so he's another one to consider but looking at the defence only 4.4 million it's hard to look past Diego Dallo if he can nail down that spot which so far he has done under Ralph Ranić 
he could be a great choice. He did very well against Arsenal and also Crystal Palace, although you have to say maybe shaky in moments against Arsenal, but I think he will do well over this next 5-10 to 10 game week period. Will he sustain that position from Wan-Bissaka? That's another story entirely. And looking at the stats here, they're pretty awful, but he's only started two games, so it's very difficult to judge him. One shot in the box, two shots, and one on target. This is pretty much in two starts and a few substitution appearances, totaling to six games overall. But Diego Dallo is a good choice. We're looking at all the other options like Eight Nuri. Wolves have poor fixtures. I wouldn't look at them. Eric Dyer, Spurs are hit by COVID. Some of their games could be postponed and the fixtures aren't that great, especially after game week 22. Then you look at Ben Johnson, he's injured. Tyreek Lamptey and Duffy, you could maybe go for them. But at the same time, Brighton are also hit with a lot of injuries and suspensions. So Diego Dallo at this moment in time is looking like the best option around 4.4 million. If you could maybe increase slightly to a Sufal, maybe that makes sense and is a bit safer long term. But right now, around that price, Diego Dallo is looking like the best option. So let's wait and see if he can sustain that spot. But if he does, he's definitely someone worth transferring in. I've been speaking about him recently and it might be a bit of a weird time to get him in right now, despite his infamous hat-trick against Liverpool last season in a 7-2 victory. But the fixtures from game week 17 onwards are fantastic for Aston Villa, so you can maybe go for him. Emi Martinez isn't actually out of the realms of possibility, but I would mainly be looking at their defenders instead, like Cash and Target. But up front, Ollie Watkins is looking really good. Don't discount Danny Ings either, but... Watkins always gets a lot of chances, 27 shots, 24 shots in the box, which is unbelievable, 13 shots overall being on target. He has played 13 games, but still 7 big chances, so pretty much a big chance every 2 games or so. 0 big chances created and 11 key passes, so his creativity isn't anything spectacular, but you wouldn't be too surprised if he manages to get 5-7 to seven assists by the end of the season. But ultimately, you're looking at the goals. And when he does score and Villa win, he will be in and amongst the bonus points. What I would say though is that he does miss a lot of chances. And that does also reduce the possibility of getting those bonus points. But at the same time, Watkins around 7.3 million is one of the best choices you can go for. And I do prefer Antonio. But if you're not looking for him or you already have the Jamaican then I would be considering Ollie Watkins and I think he could do very well over the next few months and he is my Villa player of choice other than Douglas Luiz and a few other budget options. Circumstances change and a few weeks ago I was talking about selling Mason Mount but because of those hauls against Watford and West Ham, some very impressive performances. If you do have Mason Mount, I would hold. He is not someone I'd necessarily be buying in because of those blanks coming up in game weeks 24-25 and some mixed fixtures overall for Chelsea. But if you do have him... Games against Leeds, Everton and Wolves and Villa aren't necessarily the worst and even Brighton after that, especially if they're still decimated by injuries and suspensions like they are currently. But Mount is one of the better options around this price. I do prefer Diego Jota, Bernardo Silva and Jared Bowen, but I wouldn't be looking to displace Mount ahead of this fixture against Leeds for one of those options. So if you do have him, I would keep. It's not someone I'd be buying in or selling right now but I would be holding. You look at the stats as well, they're fairly decent. A lot of those appearances are off the bench or with limited minutes. He might have started, but then comes off a bit earlier than usual. Five goals and five assists, that's very impressive in just 12 appearances. 21 shots, 11 on target, 12 shots in the box, and his XG and XA numbers are fairly identical. He has been overperforming slightly, but I think the stats overall are quite sustainable. Three big chances and six big chances created. And last season, he was creating a lot of chances for other players, but he wasn't translating that into assists through no fault of his own. But I think Mount is a good option. Some decent fixtures over the next five. After that, it gets a bit more tricky, but I wouldn't be selling him. For me, Mesa Mount is a hold. Another player that I talked about selling a few weeks ago, but now I think is a hold, is Ruben Diaz. Circumstances have definitely changed with the defenders. A few weeks ago, we had Ben Chilwell firing, Rhys James, Joao Cancelo and Trent. And while three of them are still active and looking really good in the future, you have Ben Chilwell who's been injured now and he looks like he's going to be out for a long time. And Marcus Alonso, his replacement, has been nowhere near as good. And if you do have Rudiger, you don't have to sell him. But Diaz, for example, has better fixtures over the next month or two. And I think City will keep the most clean sheets 
in that time frame. So a double up with him and Joao Cancelo, I think is probably the best way to go. You can always downgrade him and then have more money to invest in your midfield and attack, but you don't have to. That's the point here. And his stats are just not really impressive. His XG is XA, zero big chances, only one big chance created and five shots in the box. Even compare that to Rudiger and these stats are pretty lackluster. But when City do keep a clean sheet, especially in a tight game, Diaz has a good chance of keeping or getting bonus points, especially with the amount of passes he makes and the amount of tackles, interceptions and aerial duels that he wins. But he is a good option. He isn't the best. He's not the most fancy, but Diaz is worth keeping. And if Marcus Alonso starts to fire, if Reguilón and Spurs suddenly have a kind of COVID-free situation, then there are more arguments to selling Diaz. But right now, with all the other situations with other clubs and other players, if you're looking for four big defenders at the back, then I would go for Ruben Diaz as that fourth defender. This may be a surprise inclusion, but the reason I say this is because a lot of people are very tempted to sell Jota for someone like Bernardo Silva or Jared Bowen. And for me, that doesn't go. I would not do that. Look at his stats. I know that he does underperform them significantly, but even this season, he's got eight goals and an XG of seven. So he has been a bit better recently in terms of his finishing, although that miss against Wolves will be etched forever into our memories. That was a really poor miss. Even his creativity numbers are very decent. And if he can continue and sustain that level of performance, he can actually get more assists and increase his chances of double-digit hauls. But the thing for me is you can get Bernardo Silva, Gerard Bowen and all these other options like Mason Mount but I wouldn't be selling Diego Jota for that. And if you don't have Jota, I'd still be looking to prioritise him over the others like Bernardo Silva and Mason Mount. And I just don't get the logic behind selling Diego Jota just because of one really poor miss against his former club. And he's just looking so good at the moment. 14 big chances is absolutely crazy for someone around his price. Five big chances created and 21 key passes overall. So the stats across the board are very impressive. And I think that Diego Jota is definitely worth keeping. If you don't have him, just buy him. One player you're definitely not looking to buy is Harry Kane, blank after blank after blank. The consistency with him is just getting those two pointers. One big haul against Newcastle with one goal and one assist is the only time he has hauled in every other game. He has been thoroughly disappointing and there have been signs of improvement on the Conte, but it's just not enough. His XG is 4.45, his XA is 2.89. So his finishing has been poor. He's been unlucky to not have those chances created, converted into assists. But Harry Kane is just not doing it. And for that price, it's an absolute robbery. I would look to sell Harry Kane no matter what, especially with the COVID situation at Spurs. Eight players and five members of staff have contracted the virus, it seems. So their next few games could be under jeopardy. And that even includes Liverpool in game week 18. Also Leicester in game week 17, the midweek fixture. And definitely Brighton, where an agreement could definitely be reached with Brighton, who have a lot of injuries and suspensions themselves. And they can agree with the Premier League uh, committee and the board to actually postpone that game fairly easily. So I'd be very surprised if that game goes ahead. And if that game were to go ahead, that would be a really good fixture for Spurs to target. But with all those injuries and COVID cases now for Spurs, it's just not looking the same anymore. And I'd be looking to sell Harry Kane anyway. I said this before the Norwich game. I thought he would maybe produce a return there. He didn't. It's just a sell and it's been thoroughly disappointing for a player who won the Golden Boot and the Golden Playmaker Awards last season. Who would have thought he would be this bad this time around? Another easy sell this week and another player impacted by COVID. It's Ivan Tony. He has the virus himself and although there is a chance that he will face Manchester United after the game against Watford, still, Thomas Frank wasn't really too keen on kind of looking ahead and trying to clarify if Tony would be available for the United game. He said we take it one game at a time. And either way, you don't want to keep him for that United fixture because after that, Southampton, Brighton, and then the fixtures get really tough for Brentford. And Watford would be a decent fixture. I was looking to hold him myself, but that positive COVID test made him an easy sell to a Watford striker. And if you don't have those strikers, Dennis or King, just sell Tony for one of them. I think that's an easy switch. Four goals and two assists in 14 appearances. It's not awful, but considering the hype around him and what he did last season, it's very disappointing. And 34 shots overall, 15 on target, 26 shots in the box, but just not enough points really translated. He hasn't justified all the hype and his stats are decent across the board, but ultimately FPL points is what matters most. And with him having the virus and him potentially missing the next two games on top of the game he already missed against Leeds, 
Ivan Tony is an easy sell, so if you weren't aware of that situation, you are now and you know what to do with him. Despite all the problems surrounding Leeds and also the really poor fixtures as you can see on screen, I am actually tempted to say Rafinha is worth holding. You could bench him for some of these tougher fixtures and play him against Arsenal, Aston Villa, etc. But ultimately, what I would say in this situation is that you have Jeroboam around the same price. You can actually stretch over to a Bernardo Silva, Diego Jota, Mason Mount and a few others potentially if you want. So I think it's worth selling Rafinha. I don't think his ceiling will be that high and Leeds have been struck with more bad news. Phillips is going to be out for the next two months. That's a major blow for Leeds, and they could be in a definite relegation fight. And also Bamford, after scoring the equaliser the other day, he injured himself during that celebration, and that does, it doesn't spell anything good for Rafinha, who got his first assist at the weekend, finally, and he, he deserves a lot more assists. He's creating chances still, just like last season. But ultimately, there's no one up front who can actually convert the chances that Rafinha creates. It's going to be a pretty much a one-man team up front, and Rafinha is going to be carrying them. And he can still do well, but I think his ceiling will be lower. There are so many other choices you can go for in midfield. So I would look to sell him, but looking at the stats across the season, very impressive. 13 appearances despite injury concerns throughout the season and illnesses and other factors coming into play. 39 shots overall for Rafinha. That's a big improvement from last season where the volume of shots was nowhere near, but he was actually getting more assists and his combination and connection with Bamford was very good and promising for Leeds United. 13 shots in the box, three big chances himself and four big chances created and 27 key passes. So I think he has actually done very well and he's done even better than what we expected because at the start of the season, a lot of people would have been a bit hesitant about him and no one expected him to have six goals after 13 appearances, to be honest. But those fixtures are just so poor. Leeds have some very bad injury situations. Two of their best players are out for quite a long while. Let's see what happens with Bamford, but it's not looking good at the moment. So Rafinha, as much as he's a quality player and you could keep him, it's a sell. So that's it. We covered nine players in the buy, hold and selling sections. And we also talked about these two, totaling 11 players covered and also several different teams along the way. Who would you actually prioritise first, Bernardo Silva or Bowen? I'm seeing a lot of people actually prefer Bowen and getting him in first, and I completely understand that. But in terms of analysing different team situations, I probably would look to get Bernardo Silva in first, especially if you already have Mikel Antonio. But thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this or found it useful, smash the like button and subscribe if you're around here. Who else is a buy, hold or sell? I'm very keen to see what your thoughts are on that as well. And if you haven't already joined the Discord server, the link is in the description below. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram, Dylan underscore RCM. It's the same as my YouTube username. And you can also join the league, the FPL league, 886RGT. That's the league code and the link is also there. So you can just click on it and you're already in the league. So good luck with Game Week 16. Good luck with your transfers. Let's see what happens over the next few weeks. It's going to be hectic during this festive period. Enjoy the football and I'll see you next time.